Hi, welcome to the Mermaid Survival Guide. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Xanthi. I live on a boat called Finding Avalon and I've been sailing her around the world for a couple of years now with my captain, Jackson. So I wanted to start this Mermaid Survival Guide for any fellow mermaids out there. Maybe you're a freediver, a sailor, a surfer, an ocean swimmer, a scuba babe whatever if you spend a lot of time in the ocean just a platform to share some handy hints of how to survive out there because mama ocean she feeds us but man she can bite sometimes so today i wanted to talk about one of the biggest areas of strife in this mermaid life hair Trying to look after your hair when it's in salt water every day and at the same time trying to stay away from toxic chemicals is just the hugest challenge and I feel like I've only just nailed it now so I really want to share the things that I've discovered with you. So first thing, shampoo bars. This thing has dead set changed my life. Chemical free, waste free, inexpensive, lasts forever, you can wash your hair and your body with it and smells amazing they do make your hair amazing not on your first go though so you've sort of got to learn how to use it this one's coconut oil based and I know that a lot of mermaids who've used a coconut oil based shampoo bar have had problems with it with regards to build up and just kind of having really gunky hair but stick with it that's normally a first time users problem and there are ways of getting around that which I'm going to talk to you about. So I will preface this with the fact that everyone's hair is different so I will invite you to sort of play around with all these tips and see what works for your hair type. So the first trick is apple cider vinegar. Mix that one part water one part apple cider vinegar. Rinse your hair after you've used the shampoo bar and that should get rid of most of the build up. If that doesn't work your next option is baking soda. I'm not going to show you my baking soda because it's in a jar that says chickpeas on it and that will be really confusing. I buy it in bulk so um, sorry about that. But so what you want to do is when you're washing your hair with the shampoo bar just sprinkle some baking soda in there. It should get rid of all the build up really nicely. If neither of those worked on their own then you can do both. Start off with the baking soda and then use an apple cider vinegar rinse to finish off. It sort of works as a conditioner. The one thing I will say is only use the baking soda for a short amount of time, it's not a long term solution. Just due to the pH levels it can be a bit damaging on your hair long term. But So try and wean yourself off it and try and use it a maximum of once every two weeks. Another thing that I've found that works while you're still trying to adapt to the shampoo bar is to cycle it with your regular shampoo. This is the shampoo I use, it's by Lush. And the reason I like it is because it's got grains of sea salt in it and it's really exfoliating and it smells like the ocean. It's gorgeous. And it's fairly natural. All right, tip number two, coconut oil. It's moisturizing, it's antibacterial, it's pure and natural. And as far as I'm concerned, you can throw out all your chemically hair products, your serums, your argan oils. This is what you want. So I'll just literally put a tiny bit of coconut oil on the ends of my hair every three days. And what you'll find is it gives it a nice shine, it protects the ends and it leaves it really moisturized. What you can also do is brush it through your hair. And what you will find is that actually leaves a bit of coconut oil on your hairbrush. And that really helps you for detangling. Don't use too much though because then you'll look like a drowned rat. Um, this is my hairbrush by the way, it's a tangle teaser in my opinion, it's the best hairbrush that money can buy, gets through really tangled hair without breakage and I love it, it's very small. Alright, tip number three, when you go to bed at night you absolutely want to be wearing hair braids. 
going to bed with hair braids in just make sure that it can't really get tangled or matted while you're sleeping you could have the night terrors and wake up with horrible mats in your hair so I find that this is the way to prevent damage during the night when you're in the ocean whether it be snorkeling scubaing surfing ocean swimming I really find the best way to wear your hair is in piggy buns I've tried lots of different things when I've been in the ocean and in my opinion this is the way that keeps your hair in the best condition. I have tried plaits and honestly they don't work for me. I still come out with matted hair if I'm wearing plaits. Hair completely down is a total no-no. Hair in one bun should work but for me this is how I roll. Another really good way to wear your hair in the ocean without tangling is actually the Ocean Ramsey style. The reason I don't really rock this ever is just basically because I feel really weird wearing it. It's Ocean Ramsey's style and I feel like it should be left as only her thing because she rocks it like a babe. Alright, tip number five. Get a neoprene snorkel mask cover. It will change your world. This one's really good. It's by a company called Deep Sea. I'll put a link to that one below so that you can get one yourself. They are so cheap. I think this one cost me $5. So that's a great investment. Before I had this, I actually lost a lot of hair to breakage. And in a way, I've kind of got layers from it. You might be able to see them, but kind of half my hair's gone on the top layer. It's really sad. But since getting this, I've not had that problem and my hair's restoring slowly. So um, these are amazing. Grab yourself one of these. While I'm on this topic, snorkels and snorkel masks in general should not rip your hair out. Ones that don't rip your hair out do exist and I would really encourage you to look for that snorkel set. It took me a while to find this snorkel. This I usually get my hair caught in these little snorkel attachments. My old one was a nightmare. This one, I haven't had any problems with it. I've probably lost one hair in the last three months. So we're doing good. Snag free snorkel set. All right, lastly, and potentially most importantly, tip number six is diet. So from the old adage, when you squeeze an orange, what's inside comes out. Same goes for yourself. What you eat will grow out the top of your head. So with regards to diet, there are things that you can load up on and there are certainly things that you can avoid that do actually inhibit your hair growth. There are so many yummy foods that if you load up on them, you should see results in your hair. And they are as follows. Eggs. They are a source of biotin which is in the B vitamin group and it is the vitamin for hair growth. Spinach, packed full of iron which aids hair growth and repair. Berries. These are delicious and absolutely loaded full of vitamin B, which the body uses to produce collagen, which contributes to strong hair. And then you want your nuts and your seeds for your omega-3s. Omega-3s basically add density and shine to your hair. Another amazing one is avocados. They are packed full of vitamin E, which is a vital vitamin for your skin and hair. Just can't buy them on a cruising budget. Shut up. And then there's sweet potatoes, pumpkins, beetroots, carrots, basically anything with that orange ready color. It contains beta carotene, which is a protein essential for hair growth. Lastly, I want to recommend to you beans. They are amazing vegetarian source of zinc, which is great for your hair. And then just a few things that you want to avoid that do actually inhibit your hair growth. Alcohol. Alcohol will dehydrate you and put your body under stress. Don't forget that in some quantities alcohol is a poison, which is why you get hangovers. <laughs> sugar. Spikes in your blood sugar levels interfere with the absorption of protein and will damage your hair follicles. And lastly, smoking. Smoking inhibits the flow of oxygen to your hair follicles, therefore inhibiting growth. With regards to supplements, there are of course some things that you can take. I take three, I'll put some links to the ones that I like below because not all vitamins and supplements were created equal. I've dabbled with a few over the years and these are the ones that I like. And these supplements are iron, biotin and silica. All right, thank you. I hope that was useful to you. If it was, then don't forget to give me a big fat thumbs up. 
because that helps with my algorithm and stuff like that. I will be doing more of these, so definitely subscribe if that's your thing. And more importantly, write in the comments section below topics that you'd like me to cover next. I'm all ears. And if you haven't been following our Finding Avalon adventures already, then I thoroughly recommend you check those out. We post a new episode every week and there's always some dramas going on. Okay, that's all from me. See you in the sea, mermaids.